Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So today we unlocked Titania, the very powerful one cost five power card that has a pretty unique ability with being that when any card is played at this location, this card switches sides. And so one cost for five power is phenomenal. But in addition to that, I look at this card as a kind of goblin that will return back to you. I look at it as a, from a control aspect, and we built a deck around Titania, but unfortunately she didn't appear in our hand very often, so this has become a showcase for Absorbing Man instead. So this list is probably one of the best shells I have felt like I have found for Absorbing Man. I know that he is going to be very powerful in certain decks, I just didn't know exactly where to put him. Everything that I put him in, he felt like a low power a low power or low tempo drop and just he felt okay some of the time but not the majority of the time in this list he operates within our kind of play line and play conditions very very well and so the idea with him in this list is that this is a control heavy list what we want to do is clog the opponent's board restrict the amount of space that they can play in so that we can find our win condition on the final turn and so that means and so with any control deck list, you're most likely going to see two and four cube games. Very rarely are you going to see the very end of a game. Now, in this list, you have your hood into a Viper combo. If you drop a debris, you can use Viper to send those rocks onto their side of the board. You can use Green Goblin. You could follow that up with an Absorbing Man to send Absorbing Man onto their side of the board. If you just really need to have that lane capped out, so maybe it was a Wong lane and you can send it back their way and then really clog up their location. You can copy your storm so that you have two stormed locations and then you can drop a Spider-Man on five. This is probably my personal favorite play line with this deck list is storm one three, absorbing man to copy storm on four in a different lane. On five, you do a Spider-Man, potentially a Spider-Man and a Titania, a Spider-Man and a demon token. And then on six, you do a Gamora, a Dr. Doom, a Jessica Jones, any kind of combination of what you need to do to get the job done. But it works very, very well. In the games that I recorded, there were countless times where at the very end of the game, the opponent just can't do anything. And those kind of control deck lists are my personal favorite. Being able to make sure that the opponent just doesn't have any priority plays or just can't do anything at all. It is so toxic, but so satisfying at the same time. Overall, the deck list runs pretty well. Titania, if you don't have her, you can replace her with maybe another one cost drop. So like a Korg or an Iceman to add some extra disruption. But she is pretty nice to have, in addition to your Spider-Man on five, to have a pretty decent power push into your second storm lane, as well as locking down the last location with Spider-Man. And so let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up we have Cease. And the first location is the Nexus, which is going to be pretty good if we can get a Spider-Man into an Absorbing Man combo, or if we can send them any, any decent amount of junk into that lane, we're going to get quite a bit of value from it. And so the second one it, ooh, is the Triskelion, which gives us a couple of kind of cool cards. We, we have Galactus, if for some reason we needed a Hail Mary. We have, uh, we have Quake, we can change the location, we can shift the location of the Nexus. And then we have Cosmo to stop any kind of ongoing abilities. But I think we're going to do Quake. After that, we may do a Cosmo into one of the other locations um, to make sure that they can't do a Galactus of their own. No, so it looks like they're running a Scorpion. So that tells me they're probably running a Leech list. And Leech lists are... So now we have a 2 cost, 6 power Galactus. We have a two cost four power spider-man so i think we i think we almost conserve some of our cards it's either that or we do like a debris next turn we do a viper yeah let's go ahead and do that we're gonna do that um if they use leech on us then we have a free uh goblin that's gonna stick into the nexus location uh we just have quite a bit of value Ooh, they could do a leech this turn oh no that's a three cost five power leech right no, okay, so it's a green goblin. Good deal. So maybe I got the read wrong. Maybe they're not running the list that I thought they were. Let's go ahead and do our Viper. Then I'm, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and 
eat the lane with our Carnage. Next turn, we can do a Spider-Man to make sure that they can't play anything in there on that final turn. But I think this should get us pretty close to where we need to be. So they do a Sentinel on the far left. We're going to send them, hopefully, the Green Goblin into the Nexus lane. So that gives them negative three. We then eat our downside. We give ourselves some additional space. And we are free to do our Galactus. That's two cost, six power. Um, our Spider-Man that we're going to drop this turn. And then... I think we do our Spider-Man and then our Cosmo. That way, if they do, for some reason, drop a card that they're trying to change this location, they're not going to be able to. And that still leaves the space to do our Galactus on the final turn, and we'll have a perfect amount of information here. And so let's go ahead and... Ooh, so they do play a card here. Um, so we have the Spider-Man, we have the Cosmo. If this is a Hobgoblin, no, it's a Captain Marvel. Very interesting that they would play the Captain Marvel and allow it to kind of roam. We could do the 5 cost 7 power here. Uh, we could we could send them a, we could send them a powerful goblin but i think we're just gonna uh, but i think we're just going to call it good um because we're gonna have quite a bit more power than they do in the nexus they're gonna have to overcome a lot uh, a lot of a power deficit in two lanes and it's gonna be very difficult to do and so they do we do force the retreat here with the spider-man play uh which actually they capped it out but we just we just they had too much junk let's go ahead and jump over into the next one all right, next up we have Bizet, and I'm wondering how they found time for this game. They're probably multitasking, so we uh, we should be able to find our win condition. We do have Storm and we have Absorbing Man, so we can change two locations into Stormed locations. And I think Clintar is going to be one that's going to be easy to sneak away. So we can do we we could do the Storm into Absorbing Man if we draw into our Doctor Doom. That's going to be beautiful if they don't have a way to go wide. Now, if they have a Cosmo and they stack and they stack it into that last remaining lane, then we're not able to go wide either. But we will. Uh, but we will see. It depends on what they drop. Okay, so they drop a Bucky Barnes. Um, so it's probably a Death Wave style deck list. We also have Spider Man going into that last turn, which is beautiful. I I love everything about this. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and snap. We're gonna do Storm on three. Uh, we're gonna do Absorbing Man here on four. That's going to kind of force their hand a little bit. On five, we can do a Spider-Man as long as we draw into our Doctor Doom. On five, we can do Spider-Man into the remaining location. And then on six, we can do our Doctor Doom and spread power into those other lanes. And so a lot of times they kind of, a lot of times it will force them into really inopportune play lines, especially knowing that a Death Wave typically has that big power push on the very last turn. So let's go ahead and change the Clintar location into the Flooded Lane as well. They will probably drop some resources into the Flooded Lane. And if they're wanting to go with the Death Wave style play line on five, they're going to have to only drop or likely only drop their wave. And so that gives us a decent amount of it gives us a decent amount of utility and information to know if we can find our win condition. And so and so they do drop a Wolverine over into the far right flooded lane. We do not have our Doctor Doom. They turn first, and so we should be able to sneak in a five power Titania. I don't know. Um, it, it, it might be enough, but it also might not be. But we are going to try it. We're going to try. OK, so the last turn, they only used Wolverine, which is two power. That means they're ooh, that means they're She-Hulk. If they have a She-Hulk is only three cost. But if that's the case, we don't really have a way to combat both of them. And they'd only be able to do one card on this last turn, which would probably be a Magneto. We're going to risk <clears throat> we're going to risk it here. It's either that or we do Gamora into the flooded lane to really to really send that one home. Um, but then either way, I think we would still be relying on a, uh, a Doctor Doom. And so they send us a Hobgoblin in the flooded lane. And so we actually have a net zero in the flooded lane to the far left. We lose the flooded lane to the right by three. They can't play anything this turn. They can't play into Atlantis. And so right now they have six power. We have eight. We're going to drop a Doctor Doom, which is going to give us the win here and the win here. I would be surprised if they don't retreat because they can't play anything. Maybe they'll be a good sport and let us uh, let us get the let us get the Doctor Doom initiation full trigger here. Oh, they do. They go ahead and let us pass. They pass and let us find our win condition. And so we play our Doctor Doom. We win left, right, and middle for the three lane sweep. 
<laughs> let's go let's go ahead and thank you biz a for being a good sport and letting that one play out all the way until the end let's go ahead and jump over into the next one all right next up we have belthazar and the first location is the vault so it's going to lock down on turn six so we're already going to be able to control two lanes and make sure that they can't play on those last two i think we probably aim to win the baxter building as our secondary lane that's what it's looking like at, at least so far and with armor we can we can hold this one down with a spider-man on five to find our win condition district x is a little bit a little bit scary we have a couple of decent cards already we have spider-man into on four into a turn five absorbing man so if we really want to polarize and lock down a location we absolutely can um so we're gonna go ahead and snap it might be bold <laughs> it might be bold but we're gonna try it uh we're gonna send them a green goblin in the baxter building and then we are looking for a spider-man into an absorbing man uh to lock down the rest of the the rest the baxter building for the rest of the game they used uh debris to send us rocks here and here what if we did a debris as well we cap out their baxter building location uh, so they do a white queen which copies our absorbing man which is not great uh, given the limited information that they have now we could do another debris to cap out and lock this location but actually i want to do a spider-man instead all we have to get here is three power unless they have a way to buff it with like a patriot or something similar we are going to we could do a debris get close to capping this one out but i think spider-man does the job just a little bit better for us so if they play into the vault to try to really lock that one down we're going to have their power matched and then all we have to do is win this lane which swings the game in our favor and so let's go ahead and lock in the spider-man play they do play to the far left we lose the vault very heavily but that's okay because we're going to win the game uh, we lose the vault we are aiming to win the other two they're not going to be able to play on this final turn so even if they did have a patriot they have no way to play it and so all we have to do is drop any combination of power that that is over three and we just win and so another two cube game a lot of this deck controls it to the point that the opponent knows that they lose that's my only gripe about control deck lists is that you put them in such a bad position that you don't get the big four and eight cube games instead you get two cube games a lot more often but you have to snap aggressively to get them all right next up we have kugusi and the first location is Asgard, so we could position ourselves to win that one. We also have the Storm into Absorbing Man combo. Uh, if we want to change this into a Stormed Lane, we absolutely can. If they are pushing heavily to win Asgard, then we can also pivot on them and switch these two so that they don't have a chance to play there any longer. Now, they dropped Hood into Monster Island, which is interesting. That tells me they probably have a Killmonger somewhere in their list um, because they're, they're not going to just eat this with unless they have maybe a venom otherwise they're not going to just eat it with a carnage or a deathlock they lose too much value so we are going to go ahead and do a storm into Z into xandar we're going to see where they play this turn they do play into asgard and so next turn we can this is going to force them to decide whether they want to push to win asgard or if they want to push to win a flooded lane and uh as a follow-up to that we are also going to drop our second storm <laughs> into monster island if they get a couple of extra cards here that's okay um i think we can still find our win condition we have our spider-man on five if we draw into titania that's phenomenal uh, because that's going to give us a lot of value in being able to do something along with our spider-man they do a spider-man as well very interesting uh, that they dropped a spider-man there i mean we'll take it but it's just very interesting and so right now they are winning this one they can drop a card here this turn <laughs> they can drop a card this turn uh but we are going to drop our spider-man we are not going to drop anything in addition to it unfortunately um the hood would not be a great value because we do plan on dropping our doctor doom to make sure that we have the win condition here and depending on what they push here i think we can find our win condition and it might be that we go gamora here instead uh maybe we go with a for some reason a viper it just depends on what they play into the middle location and if we can win it by five or not and so we now have the <laughs> we now have the spider-man they are unable to play this turn i wish we would have snapped earlier we should have absolutely snapped 
um, knowing that we had a really good setup with the double storm location. And so just like that, we are going to win um, one more cube. We're chipping away at them one at a time. We have a pretty good win rate so far, but we've also gotten very lucky with the storm into absorbing man combo. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a game where maybe we big brain Titania because we haven't seen her very much. All right, next up we have Berserk 108. The first location is Tinker's Workshop. It gives us one additional energy. We do have the Debris into Absorbing Man playline, and so that gives us a decent amount of value. We could also, if we for some reason needed to, we could go uh, Gamora into Absorbing Man. Oh, wow. Into a Project Pegasus, which is going to give us seven energy this turn. We can do both Debris here. And just hope that they flood a lot of their power onto the board. Because um, if they do, then we, we hit them with a double a, a double debris. We still have a Carnage. We still have a Viper. We still have Titania to clog up their board even more. A Green Goblin uh, and Storm. Uh, and Storm is buried there as well. So unfortunately, they do um, drop a lot of their cards into the Tinkerer's Workshop. So the far left lane. We are going to send them a couple of a couple of cards into both the middle and the far right lane. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to cap anything out, but it does get close. And so if we get a Viper here or a Green Goblin, that should be a guaranteed trick. Ooh, Lemuria is uh, awfully unfortunate for us um, because we could have dropped a Green Goblin or a Viper. Luckily, we didn't draw into it, but we could have dropped one of those here. And then s they're not going to be able to play a card here in the middle location this turn. But with Lemoria, they could wait a turn and then they could drop a card and it just it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be great. Let's go ahead and do the hood and the carnage. That's going to give us a six power demon and it helps us let us try to find our win condition for the following turns. We're getting close to having all of the lanes capped out. This now becomes a gamble. Um, do they play into Project Pegasus? Do, do they play into Lemoria? <laughs> do they play into Tinker's Workshop? I don't know. I think they play into the Project Pegasus. Seeing that we played two cards, I think this is where they play. We're going to gamble and try to send them a Green Goblin. We could just do a Jessica Jones for an eight power value, which is good. But I want, but I want to have a complete lockdown. So let's go ahead and do it. We do get the right read. They play into the middle location, expecting like a Viper or some kind of negative card. And so we send them the Green Goblin in Lemuria instead. So it was a little bit of a kind of delayed diversion. And so now this lane is negative two for now. It's actually zero now. Um, the only place that they can play is here, but I do not think that they play there this turn. I think they play there next turn. And so let's go ahead and just do our Jessica Jones. Next turn, we can do a Gamora and a Demon to find our win condition. I don't I don't think they play anything into this lane. Um, if they do, then I'll be very, very surprised. I want to snap, but at the same time, I don't know if they'll retreat or not. We're going to snap. We're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and send it. Let's do the Jessica Jones in mid. That's going to give us an extra eight power here. And then if they don't have uh, a way to pull those cards back in, so like a Falcon or a or a Beast, then they're going to probably end up retreating, which they do. Um, and that is our game number five. So we've had a couple of different conditions. We haven't found Titania. We are going to go ahead and do a sixth game because we haven't got much playtime with Titania and we built this deck around Titania and it turned into an Absorbing Man deck. All right, next up we have Nas. And we've played so many games, guys. So many games. And she's finally here. This is... I've... I played about six or seven more since the last game was showcased. Um, some of them we won, some we lost, but she just has not been present in our hand in any of them. And so we finally have her in the starting hand. We're going to throw her into the Titania lane, now into, into the Muir Island lane. Now, if they have a Killmonger, they're going to be able to destroy it. But we just don't know. Um, kind of want to play Viper and then we'll send it their way and then bounce it right back. That feels fun to me. I don't I don't know. And if they play a card, it'll bounce their way or no. Yeah, we send it their way um, and then we bounce it right back. And then their Adam Warlock is actually going to send it their way as well. What a strange, <laughs> what a strange card. Um, let's go ahead and do our Green Goblin on three and maybe we can lock them out because if they play a card, it will bounce our way and then we'll send them Green Goblin and that will trigger Titania to bounce back. And we can cap out Muir Island and just kind of let it set until turn six 
where we play a one cost card, maybe a, a demon, and just swing it back in our favor. And so the vault is going to close down on turn six, and we're going to get a random card from X Mansion here. So with an Adam Warlock showing, I think they might be running a Galactus deck. No, so they drop a storm. Very interesting. And so we are going to send them the Green Goblin that bounces Titania back to our side. Now, if they play a card, that will bounce it back to her, their side and they'll cap themselves out. Um, otherwise, we can do like a double drop. Oh my gosh. And then we send them the Hobgoblin and they get a dagger out of it. That is awful. Um, we could we can do Absorbing Man here. <laughs> We can do absorb. We can do absorbing man, and that's going to act like a green goblin. It's going to send their way, uh, and it will also bounce the Titania their direction, and then we can always cap it out and send Titania back our way on the last turn, which I think I'm okay with. They'll get some additional cards with Adam Warlock, but we're going to lock them out of this lane. Ideally, they'll be locked out of this lane, and then we can lock them out next turn from X Mansion with our with our Spider Man, and we'll just have the game locked down. We are, oh, we snapped a little bit too late, unfortunately. So, ooh, we do use the Absorbing Man, which would trigger the Titania, but they use a Killmonger, which kills our Titania. Oh, that kills me. That's okay. Um, they have 10 power here. We should be able to get a pretty big power push as well. And we have Dr. Doom. We have Dr. Doom. If they don't go wide this turn, then we can use Dr. Doom. We can lose. We can afford to lose Muir Island and we'll win this one and this one. And so if they're waiting to do an Odin to resend the goblin back, they're not going to be able to drop it. Um, I think this is our path to win here. Uh, oh, so they do drop the Wong. So it could have been a double white tiger. It could have been any number of things. But instead, we are going to lock them out of this location. They do draw additional cards, but they can't play anywhere. So we can do the Doctor Doom. We guarantee our win condition here. And we guarantee our win condition in the flooded lane. And so just like that. Now, had the Hobgoblin not been there, I think it would have been exactly the same. They would have had four power. Our Doctor Doom would have been enough to find our win condition anyways. Uh, we just got really lucky with the flip from X Mansion there. Un unlucky with the Killmonger drop, but very lucky in X Mansion to find our win condition. And so we did play a little bit of Titania, uh, Titania bounce back, not as much as I would like to do. And so I may dive into this deck a little bit deeper as uh, some other time to try to get some good showcases with Titania. Uh, but it turned into an Absorbing Man control deck, which worked incredibly well. And with that one, we are going to end the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.